Hey guys, this is Tensor. So I wanted to make a quick little update video with regards to Flutterweb and the live stream that we did this morning. So a lot of people were asking questions regarding the speed and the size of the bundle that was created by the Dart2JS compiler. And when I was doing the live stream, at the very last moment, I was able to compile the application, but I wasn't able to do it with any of the optimizations. So I gave a figure on the calculator application of about 800 kilobytes in size of the final JavaScript bundle. Now after going back through this document here, which is the uh, GitHub repository for Flutter Web, there are actually quite a few things that I noticed. First of all, I was running everything from the command line, and they've got this command here, which allows me to initiate the auto restart. So this would cause the application to hot reload on save without me having to have done it manually like I was doing in the live stream. This is something that I'll probably use in the future if I have to record and I can't record Chrome again, which apparently OBS is not very good at recording Chrome. Also, if you come down right below where you've got this command here, they talk about building uh, production with the JavaScript compiler. And they do in fact confirm that it is using the Dart2JS compiler. And if you go over to the Dart2JS site, there are quite a few commands that you can put into the compiler to uh, sort of slim things down. They've also got the release compiler, which we used before, which is just webdevserve-r, which if you want to put it on the server, or just webdev build if you want to actually build it out and then put it on your own server. Also, we have our build.yaml file, which I did try to use, but remember it didn't work because for whatever reason I was running things inside of VS Code and the Dart virtual machine didn't like that. And so I went ahead and I ran the web dev build just now using this build.yaml for this project. The project that I'm running this on is the block tutorial or the, the movie searcher application that we have. So this is the largest application that I've built in Flutter Web thus far. If we take a look at the app, it's, I guess, a semi-large application. Right here, it actually says that we have roughly 18 million characters of Dart. And these 18 million characters are converted down to about 1 million characters of JavaScript. Now, of course, this includes Flutter Web, Flutter Web UI, as well as Rx Dart. So this project also includes a third-party dependency outside of the Flutter Web dependencies. And that's why I consider it to be a semi-decent example of a regular Flutter app at the very least. Now to really kind of demonstrate what's going on here, what I've done is I've started up the web dev server using web dev serve dash R. So it's going to use the actual build compiler and it's going to optimize the code. And then we're going to actually launch the server and we'll be able to see how large the bundle is using the debugger right here. So here's our application. And if we look in here, we can see here is the HTML. So the HTML document is roughly 300 bytes in size. And then the main.dart.javascript file is 1.1 megabytes in size. Now, of course, this is only on the first load. Now notice when I go ahead and I load this again, we get the gzipped version, which is only 343 bytes in size. So it significantly decreases the size of a reload, which is pretty cool. If we're talking about a cached website that's built with Flutter Web currently, it's got really good performance as far as the pack is concerned. But if we're talking about the initial load, I'd say it's somewhat mediocre, though I think it's pretty impressive considering the status of this project. Obviously the Dart2JS compiler is pretty mature, and I think it's pretty cool that they've been able to apply that compiler right out of the gate with very few problems. All right, guys, well, I hope this answered some of your questions for anybody who is still curious about the potential performance of Flutter Web at the current moment. If I were you, though, I'd take this video with a grain of salt because obviously Flutter Web is going to change. And obviously the framework will change over the coming months as they keep adding to it and changing how it gets compiled and all of that stuff. All right, guys. Well, if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.